Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Amanda Meyer, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator here at Estimating Edge. And today, Mike Mao, who is our Training and Technical Support Management Manager, will be covering tapered installation. Before we get started, we have a couple housekeeping items. All lines have been muted, and we will answer questions after the webinar. To ask a question, enter them to the question window, and we'll answer them at the end. Mike, next slide. Thank you, sir. I will be I will be emailing you a link of the recording, and you can watch it on demand on our website. When you leave the webinar today, a pop-up window will appear with three questions, and we'd love to hear your feedback. Don't forget to sign up for next month's webinar on mapping conditions. Mike, let's get started. Great. Thank you, Amanda. Welcome to the Estimating Edges series of webinars. In today's webinar, we will look deeper into the properties of the tapered insulation module and cover the most frequently asked questions and latest technical elements that will enhance your tapered experience. Topics we're going to cover today include the thickness at the drain, its requirements and options, sump board usage and options, fastener length guidelines and adjustments, the Cricut applied percentage for adhesive slash asphalt, and the multi-layer baseboard add-on options. Let's dig in. Whoa. Here we have the Firestone Taper module. And going deeper into properties, we're going to look at the thickness at drain. The overall thickness at the drain specified by the architect is a key component of a tapered system. How we arrive at this in the edge has been an area of confusion through the years. Let's clear that up. The thickness at drain under the slope boards is referring to the sloped boards only, not the overall thickness at the drain necessarily. Important to remember. Thus, your thickness at drain value under the slope boards must be one of the beginning thicknesses from your slope board detail of X, Y, and Z boards or the half inch, inch and a half, and two and a half. So if I want an overall thickness at the drain of six inches, I do not put six inches here. The edge will look at that as a, uh, a bad value in trying to click OK. You do get a warning that we have an invalid thickness at the drain in the bottom right. So the edge will stop you from making such a mistake, but it will like one of the slope board detail thicknesses. If the minimum overall thickness at the drain equals one of the slope board detail thicknesses, you may use that thickness. For example, if we wanted, if the, if the minimum overall thickness required was two and a half inches, we can put two and a half inches here, and that is just fine. Now, we not limited to that. We could still choose to use a half-inch starter, which is the X board, and come over into the filler tab and the base and put our two-inch uh, base insulation in there, which totals a to uh, which is a total of two and a half inches, our minimum requirement. So a couple different ways to do that. I'm going to back out of this base for the moment and come back to it. And notice when I back out, I am going to zero out this thickness. If I don't zero out the thickness, the fastener calculator is going to try to grab that and use it and will increase the overall length by that amount. So we want to make sure we zero that out. When the minimum overall thickness exceeds, the two and a half inches of our of our max board, 
you must go to the filler tab and turn on the base and 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 configure the appropriate value in conjunction with the uh, thickness at the drain. So let's take under consideration that six inches at the drain we were talking about. If I come in here and I create three and a half inches of base at at uh, at the drain plus two and a half inches, which is our Z board, we now have come up with that six inch minimum overall thickness at the drain. Very good. I'm going to go back to this and zero this out for the moment and back to my general and I'll leave that at, at two and a half. So let's move on to the sump boards and their usage. Sumps are activated with this toggle on off. The slope is generally twice that of the slope board, so in this case a half inch. The normal board size 4x4 four four is common. And the first player we have here is this half board checkbox. Well, if we check that, we are going after a 4x4 four four sump that we'll use for sump boards. Okay, If we uncheck that, which means we're going to do a full board sump, this will create an 8x8 eight eight sump and the requirement of 8 sump boards. I've got a, a diagram here that will kind of explain what that looks like. On the left is our 4x4 four four sump using four boards, and you can see uh, the cutaway uh, to make that happen. A lot of those four by fours are eventually waste. On the right, you see the eight by eight sump and the use of eight boards with diagonal cuts. And you can see the result and how that fits into that sump arena. Activating the sump turns on a, a sump count item in the drawing screen. And we're going to go take a look at that. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you'll notice one of the sump symbols. The sump count icon is right here. And it creates a nice sump. What's nice about this is you can come up and you can change the type of designation there is. Maybe you like the X better, which is fine. And you also get to change and increase or decrease the size of the sump, depending on what size you're really after. And you can see it kind of matches into my taper takeoff very well. So let's back out of here for the moment and get back into properties. And let's now look at our faster length guidelines and adjustments. So here we are, you know the edge is well known for calculating the various faster lengths and quantities for the tapered system. The players involved for calculating these varying lengths are the minimum and maximum protrusion entries. The common minimum protrusion entry is three quarters of an inch. So you can see I've started with that minimum. The maximum is a variable, and I like to use a one inch spread there because that is going to create a nice situation for the number of fasteners per board. That will actually have a, a one inch variance, but one fastener length per board. So let's go take a look at that. And I'll show you what that means. So under that one inch variance, you can see my fastener uh, lengths are one per board and, and escalate in one, one inch increments toward the end. Very nice. Very easy for our guys in the field to maybe put those in and not, and not lose track. But what would happen if we came in and we changed this a variance to three quarters of an inch. Well, that doesn't bode quite as well 
for our fasteners against the installation. You can see we're actually getting two different fasteners per board and the chance to make more mistakes and at the end of the job not have enough fasteners for the long guys. So I, I, I definitely prefer that one inch variance and or a two inch variance. A two inch variance will simply change a fastener length every two boards. And you can see how that would work. The eventual fastener length is a mathematical function in the edge, looking at the slope of the system, the thickness of the slope, filler, base, and cover boards and the variance between the minimum and maximum protrusion values. If the results show only whole numbers, then we are good to go. But when the results show fractional lengths, then adjustment can be made by increasing the minimum and maximum protrusion here. Let's go see what the result of this looks like in our item list. So I'm gonna move into our items and scroll down and you can see I've got a four and a half, five and a, or four and a quarter, five and a quarter, six and a quarter fractional lengths. And you know, I can't order my fasteners that way uh, normally. So the adjustment is to come back and do condition properties, back to the fasteners, and I am going to adjust this minimum and maximum. Now I can decide, can I spare that quarter inch that it was over? And if I could, I'm gonna actually back this down to 0.5. I could go the other way as well. And I'm gonna make back this down to 1.5 inches, which is still keeping that half, that one inch variable. So let's go see the result of that. And you can see I've now moved into a four inch five inch, six inch, seven inch uh, fastener. Great, well that covers the fasteners. Let's now move into the Cricut applied percentage. Okay, we're gonna move back out of here and come into properties. And we are now talking about this area of the module. The Edge designed the tapered module with a full tapered system and layout in mind. The crickets were later added and fit nicely into the module. One reality surfaced years later is the adhesive applied to the crickets were factored against the total cricket boards, including any part of the cricket board not being used. Being the lesser part of a tapered system, the additional adhesive blended into the full tapered adhesive quantity and it didn't have much impact. As the cost of adhesive has risen, it became important to get a tighter estimate on the Cricut adhesive. So we introduced the Cricut applied percentage chart. And we're going to look at that now. Inside of this three dotted button, this lookup, we have uh, ordered this by ratio or shape of the cricket and with the appropriate lengths of the base leg, okay? And our job is to choose the right factor here and the right shape and the right size of an average cricket. So it's not that we're, we're going to slice this a, a lot. It's, it gets to be very simple. So let's go look and see how we determine the shape and size of our crickets. So I'm gonna click OK and we're gonna go into our drawing screen. So looking at this blueprint, I see some large crickets on the right, I see some medium crickets on the left, and I see some smaller crickets in the middle. Well, after examining this for a couple uh, seconds, I can see, well, my medium cricket is the one that I'm interested in and the one I need to find out the shape and size of. So as I zoom in, I'm gonna slide over to my area measurement and I'm gonna measure a quarter cricket. All of this shape 
is based upon a quarter cricket. So as I come up to that ridge, I notice that my my length is 18, almost 19, and that my width is just about seven feet. So the ratio is closest to that 33% ratio. And as I remember, that, that length was 19 feet. So I would go immediately up into the editor. I would come into my, my chart. And the first thing I want to do is say, hey, I know I'm looking for a 33% ratio. So this is pretty cool. It brings all those ratios into play. Next, I'm going to slide down my base leg length and looking for my 19. And, and I don't have one, but I have a 20. So the 20 will suffice. This is all about getting closer and not within a, a, a penny. So I'm going to use this 0 0.609 percentage to calculate my adhesive when I use adhesive for my crickets. Okay, another word about those ratios. I didn't uh, show the ratios, but here's a diagram of those ratios we were talking about. That 25% ratio is base to width. Uh, the 33% ratio is a 10 to 30, and so on. So again, between the the size, which is the 30, and the and the overall shape, which is the ratio, we determine that average size of a cricket. So let's now move into. I'm going to hit OK and get out of the drawing screen for a second, and let's go examine our multi-layer base board options, which we find under the filler tab in the base. The edge paper module design allows for one base board, uh, and in the day, that is that is all we needed. And so if a two-inch base was all we needed, then we're good to go. There's no other adjustments necessary. But in the case of a multi-base, well, what do we do? It became apparent over the last few years that, that multiple bases were needed. So we will, what we want to do in this field is put in the total length of, or the total width or thickness of our base. So two layers of 2.2 inch would become 4.4 inches, okay? And from here, we need to proceed to our add-on tab. And our add-on tab will make a few adjustments for that two layers of 2.2. I'm going to sort this add-ons to show you uh, the nice uh, linear view of what we're after. This base layer from the filler tab is the default that's representing that, uh, that base, again, from the filler. But because we're changing it, we, we're going to turn off the base from the filler tab, and we're going to slide down till we find two base layers of 2.2 inch. And we're going to turn that on. And functionally, that is all we need to do. Let's go see what happened. So we're going to, again, peek into our item list. And we're going to scroll down, and we see one, two more layers of 2.2 and an extra handling for that extra base. Very cool. Well, let's go back up and look at some of the other adjustments in that add-on tab. Well, we, we might decide, and I'm going to go ahead and sort that again. Well, what if we were going to fasten just the base, okay, which very well might happen? Well, we're going to go back to add-ons, and we're going to now have to pick that base fastener. And I'm going to slide down and get my 6-inch base fastener. And I'm going to also slide up and include one more loose lay 
of a base if I need it. If you don't track that sort of thing, then you wouldn't turn that on. But I'm going to click OK, and let's go just watch how that works. So you can see I have found my 6-inch all-purpose, and I did pick up another loose lay of a base insulation. Well, we're not quite done yet. What else could happen? Well, someone's going to come along and suggest, well, I only want to fasten the first layer of this two-layer base. Well, I'm going to go ahead and change. Well, I'm going to sort first, and I'm going to change and turn off my six, and now go to a four. But I'm also going to turn on my additional adhesive for that second layer of base. And, and that's an important thing to do. And let's go see what happens again. So you can see my fastener has dropped to a four, and I've now introduced my twin pack and adhering of an extra adhering labor for that extra base layer uh, for adhesive. So let's go back one more time and just to round out the other options. The other options also include the ability to mix and match. We can mix and match Densdeck with another layer of insulation or multiple sizes of insulation and with the other appropriate adjustments. So this wraps up the webinar for the tapered module. Clients with older databases may want to adopt some of these newer adjustments and can talk to their edge sales reps about what it'll take to implement. Thank you for joining me, and now let's go and see if there are any questions from our audience today. Amanda? Thank you, Mike. Let's get started with some audience questions. So right now we currently have one question. If you increase the number of boards in the system, you would not have to use a base layer in the system, correct? Um, well, that's... It, that depends upon how how big your uh, tapered is, but just increasing increasing the number of layers here simply extends out when that first filler might be needed. I mean, at some point, um, oh, I, I see what he's saying as well. Uh, he's not really talking about uh, base. Well, again, opening up a fourth layer, yes, will give you a four and a half inch starting board, but at some point, if the requirement at the drain was six inches, I will need an extra base. I can't, I can't get to six inches with this four and a half inch thickness, or this three and a half inch thickness. I jumped one, sorry. Any other questions? That is all the questions for today. Thank you again for joining us, and have a great day, everyone. Oh, wait, there's one more. Hold on. There's one more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, so the next question is, can you have three base layers, two insulation, and a thin stack base? Well, you can, so let's go take a look at that add-on. I'm going to turn off, well, maybe a 2.2. Two layers of that is not needed. But yes, I can have a, a dense deck. I can have uh, uh, one and a half inches of that, and I can have 2.6 inches of that. You then just have to decide what, what's happening with the fastener. If you're fastening through a wall, it's going to get picked up automatically. Um, and, we, and we don't want to forget you need to add up all of this base layer. So at the moment, I got a half inch, uh, two inches, and this is now up to 4.6. So we'd have to come back into here and create a 4.6 so that the fastener would calculate properly. I hope that helps. All right, and then we have another question. If you add a base layer, will the edge automatically calculate the fastener length, or do you have to add the thickness to the fastener embedment? No, the edge the edge is automatically looking at our base thickness, kind of as I alluded to originally. Even 
even if I turn that off, the edge is thinking you've got this 4.6 inch base in there somehow. So, no, you don't have to worry about the overall fastener. The overall, if, if you're, let's go to look at the fasteners. If you are fastening all, the edge calculates all that together. If I if I go to just a base, yes, I need to go make sure I've got the appropriate base fastener turned on, which might be a, a seven inch, could be a six inch. I hope that helps. Another, I got another question for you. Great. How do you how do you adjust the adhesive for the field and the corner and perimeter? Oh, that's a, that's a, well, the field, the field is simply automatically getting picked up. Let's just suggest that we were going to adhere everything. The field all gets picked up here. There is a, uh, there's, there's an, a big, there's an adjustment and a way to actually calculate perimeter and corner adhesive extra but it's a bit more involved than we have time for. Be happy to share that with an individual uh, later on. But uh, it, it can be done. It just takes a little bit more work uh, with this module to, to make that happen. All right. Hope that um, helps. Can you get the report to show multiple base layer in cover board? Uh, Multiple base layer, no. The report is is looking back at this 4.6, and it it's it will it will show 4.6, and we're we'll have to realize well we can't buy a board that thick. So, uh, but but the the edge because we've kind of created this this add on multi layer reality, the internal. Edge does not know really what we're doing with those multi layers, and so it won't show a multi layer base. All righty. Thank you again, everyone, and <laughs> have a great day. <laughs> Thank you all.